This afternoon, the minority in parliament are taking on Vice President Baumia to the cleanest for blaming the NDC as part of blame for Ghana's current economic predicament. The Vice President listed four reasons that has pushed Ghana to the IMF, two being an external and other rest being policies of the Eswa Mahama administration. Speaking to journalists in parliament, ranking member on the Finance Committee, Dr. Kessiel Atoforsen, urged the Vice President and his government to accept responsibility for their mismanagement of the economy and not seek to blame others. I heard him yesterday when he tried to blame the current mess that we are in on the banking sector. Clean up. But I beg to say, I beg to say that the situation we find ourselves in today can never be attributed to international situation or external situation as well as policies that they inherited. This is a government that has proven to be wasteful, incompetent, and to conclude, useless. I say wasteful in the sense that they inherited so much a robust tax policy. They inherited ESLA that has given them so far almost 15 billion cities to deal with the energy sector situations. Unfortunately, they decided to collateralize it for until 2035 and spent the money today. They have collateralized almost everything as if this country do not have generations yet unborn and squandered all the money on consumption and kebab. I want to ask our vice president that he should simply take responsibility because we will not accept the way he is trying to shift blame. He has messed us up, period. He's responsible for the mess that we are in. Simple. And let him accept that he has failed. The minority claim that the vice president has no credibility. They blame the state of the economy on the government's insatiable appetite for borrowing and giving out unbridled tax exemptions. Ship of the vice president. He supervised the economic policy of Nanado Danko Kufuado. That I, I call it one program, one loan, one P, one L. They believe that every single program they have to go and borrow money. To them, every fiscal problem is borrowing and one bond. That is why today Ghana's debt is unsustainable. I want to ask our vice president that where was he when his the economic management team that he supervised or he chairs, they were borrowing as if there was no tomorrow. Where was he when they were sharing the COVID money like Kalewole? Where was he when they were granting tax exemptions like Wole? I want to find out from him. Where was he when they were misrepresenting the fiscal data in a manner that became a public and international radical? Let's go live to Parliament and speak with Parliamentary Correspondent Kweku Sante for more. Kweku, what's the minority's justification for accusing the Vice President for, of trivialism? Indeed, um, Aisha, just like you had the very strong words there from the minority to Vice President Dr. Baumia, but the data they've been presenting regarding the cost of borrowing, they've been particularly speaking about how much government has borrowed since it came into office and why they think it is the reason why government has ended here. The government should have listed that as part of the reasons why we are heading to the IMF. They've also been talking about the loan agreements that they've been piling before parliament. We know that currently there's a $1 billion loan agreement. The minority are still insisting that in the current state and form of that loan agreement, they are not going to approve it. And so they've been particularly singling out borrowing and tax exemptions that have been granted by government to private agencies are some of the things that has led Ghana and a lot of revenue that government could have used for other economic activities. So they are calling on the vice president and the government to accept responsibility and not shift the blame on the NDC party that left power six years ago. Mm. What else is happening in parliament this afternoon? So, Aisha, it was expected that the Privileges Committee will lay its report on the three MPs today. 
what I'm thinking is that this report cannot delay today because both sides do not agree on the finality of it. And so they'll be using the weekend and also Monday to try and finalize it before they lay the report before the House. Aisha, we have seen the report, the draft report. The draft report does not say anything about Ajua Safu losing his seat automatically. We've been finding out from the vice, uh, the, the chairman of the committee, Joseph Osewusu, I just finished interviewing him and we'll be sending the report to our, view, our viewers shortly. He's been explaining that his viewpoint is that from the legal perspective, Honorable Sarah Joseph who loses her seat automatically because she failed to appear before the Privileges Committee to explain herself and why she did not appear before the House in 15 days. But the two other MPs, Honorable Kennedy and Japan and Honorable Henry Corte, per the draft report that we have seen, and there do not seem to be much disagreement between both sides of the House, has been, ha, have been pardoned. The bone of contention now is Sarah Joasafo. And when the report is laid on Tuesday, as we are picking, we are expected to be a dogfight between the minority and the majority who are insisting that the, 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 the Deputy Speaker, who is the Chairman of the Privileges Committee, has not used the appropriate rules and regulation to make such referrals and statements that he made exclusively to us join us. Kweko, did he explain why he went ahead to announce that when he knew indeed it wasn't captured in their report? Indeed, he says that his viewpoint is what the law says. And what he is saying is that their report is not even subject to debate. Of course, we know that the minority and the speaker himself disagree on that fact. So he said that what he, when he spoke to join us, what he was saying was the viewpoint of the law. And that if an MP, having been referred to the Privileges Committee, fails or refuses to appear, despite the person having been given opportunity to do so, it is automatic. And so he's expecting that when they lay their report before the House next week, the clerk of parliament will take a cue and then write to the Electoral Commission to declare the seat vacant. He's putting this on the basis of the Constitution that says that it is automatic. And also the Court of Appeal ruling in the Stemikoku Asari case that reference that if an MP, having been referred to the Privileges Committee for absenting themselves for 15 consecutive sittings, does not provide a reasonable explanation or fails to provide an explanation, the automaticity kicks in and the seat should be declared vacant. Next week is expected to be a showdown in Parliament and we are live for it. Gokwa Sante is our correspondent in Parliament. Definitely will bring you more from Parliament in our subsequent bulletins.